There are certain dishes which have lasted the test of time. Those great classics, a steak a poivre, a duck à l'orange, a beef bourguignon. We still see them on menus today. And if we go back to the old world of gastronomy, Escoffier's world, they're on the menus then. And why have they stood the test of time? Because they're delicious, because we want to eat them, we want to make them. But my favourite is a steak au poivre. And I've eaten it all over the world. But trust me when I say this. I was taught it when I was a boy of 18 years old at the Box Tree in Ilkley in West Yorkshire. Michael Lawson was the first British chef to ever win two stars in Michelin. He'd done his apprenticeship in the same kitchen my father had done his apprenticeship, the Queen's in Leeds, in the French room, with a chef called Paul Lebar. And he taught me. Very simple, very straightforward, never straight from the classics. All he did was refine things. And that's why I always say we live in a world of refinement, not invention. So to begin with, we make the sauce. Take our onion. Remove the core. It serves no purpose. And just coarsely chop your onions. No need for them to be fine. Slice a little garlic. Okay. A little clarified butter. You may ask, what's clarified butter? It's normal butter, melted and cooked to separate the fat from the butter. That's what it is. In with your onions. Work your onions down. A little cracked pepper. As I always say, the amount of cracked pepper depends on how spicy you like your peppered steak. It's your choice. That's the beauty of cooking. A recipe is only a guideline. It shouldn't dictate to you. The only thing that should dictate is your palate. Just cook them softly and gently. Remove all that water content. By doing that, you remove the acidity. Just spread them along the bottom. And take time, invest time. If you don't invest the time, you will never get the desired result. As I've always said, perfection is lots of little things done well. If you can't fry an onion, how can you make a sauce? Think about it. If you don't question what's happening, where's your understanding? Just slowly wilt them, tiny bit of color. There we are. Time to add the brandy. Whenever you add alcohol, like brandy, Madeira, port to a sauce, if it flames, blow it out immediately. Because all it'll do is scorch the things alongside the pan and within the pan. Just taste the brandy. What I can tell by tasting that the alcohol has now evaporated away. And now I'm reducing it down to get that intensity of flavor of the brandy. What you can see, it's almost syrupy now. Then we just add the cream. Just work it. Just work it through. Bring to the boil. And then cook it to a coating consistency of a spoon. So when you make a cream sauce, you have to question why you're making a reduction. Why? Make a concentrate, because once you add the cream, you're diluting that concentrate. And then you cook it so it infuses into the cream. And then leave to infuse. And then pass. And it's all about maximizing flavor. Just bring it down from the edges again. When most people make an au poivre sauce, they cook the onions, the cracked pepper, they add the brandy, reduce it down, add the brown stock, and then add the cream. We flip it around. Onions, cracked pepper, then brandy, then cream, and then we bring in the brown stock to create a cafe au lait colour. That's what we do. So we have more control of what we're doing. So now we're cooking the cream and we're reducing it slowly. So we want a coating consistency of the spoon. It just needs a little bit more. You can see it's just starting to coat. No rush. Let's not forget a sauce must have texture, but at the same time be light. There's nothing worse than th something that's wishy-washy or something that's too heavy. So you have to question what you're doing. You have to think of the meat. So with beef, for example, you have a heavier sauce than you would with lamb or with chicken. Because it's a denser meat. It's a heavier meat. 
As you can see, it's slowly reducing and thickening. So now it's time for the brown stock. Work that through to create that cafe au lait colour. And then we add a little mustard. A little seasoning. A tad more black pepper. Just the infusion. A little bit more brown stock. Now you've achieved the coating consistency you require. And then what we do is cover with a cling film. Just for the infusion, it's as simple as that. And then we'll readjust at the end, just before we pass it through the sieve. It's now time to prepare the steak. And that's very simple. Straight down the middle. And then a half again. So, take our finely ground black peppercorns, a little corn flour, and this is one of Little Box Street's secrets. Just mix it with the peppercorns. Just work it through with your fingers. Very few people know this secret, but this is how you keep the crust. Season the top side of the steak with salt. Now place the steaks onto the cracked pepper and the corn flour. Just press them down. So just a little bit of pressure, so not to lose the shape of the steak. And there we are. So, place your steaks in the dry pan. When I say dry, no fat. Season. Let the heat come into it, so therefore it sets it. The protein and the corn flour now can do their work. You slowly cook that peppercorn to get the heat out of it. it just softens it a little bit. And the next stage is a little clarified butter. Slowly tilt the pan. So it just seeps underneath. So this is the moment of truth, to see if it's worked. When I was a boy at Box Tree, if you got it wrong, they stopped you from working on that job for one week, so you had time to think about where you've gone wrong. So, look at that. And work your pan. Because when you think a stove is like a piano, this is cooler than that. So you may have noticed that sometimes I just move the pan. That's so it cooks evenly. So, very gently. Just be very gentle with it. Don't be rough, use your fingers, not the tongs. Because the last thing you want is for that crust to drop away. Just work the pan round. The steak is cooked medium rare. It's rested, it's releasing its juices. And now is the time to finish. So there's our sauce which is infused. We'll check once more. For seasoning, a little bit more salt, and now is the moment where we pass it on. And be generous with sauce. There's nothing worse than getting a large piece of meat with a little bit of sauce. And just flood with the sauce onto the centre of the stove and bring the heat back in. So all those juices which are priceless 
are now in the sauce, not left on the plate or in the tray where they've rested. There we are. Just work those gent sauces through. And there we have the steak au poivre. But always serve it in the pan. Take it to the table and help yourself or serve your guests. If you think trying to dress at home for a dinner party for six to eight people, the food's tepid. This is the only way to do it. And then just one final taste. Look at that coating also, so it's got texture, it's light, but it's got real flavor. And now serve. Steak au poivre, how the boxer used to make it all those years ago. And in my opinion, the only thing to serve with the steak au poivre is fantastic chips. Cooked fresh, to order, and then a green salad. But don't dress it, don't season it until you've eaten the steak and the chips, just indulge in those two flavors. And that's the perfect dinner.